Find control should just always be a knob. In today's video, I'm gonna show you how I made a remote control wireless volume knob using two Wi-Fi enabled Arduinos and a CNC encoder wheel. As you can see, the volume knob is super responsive. I can go from zero to 100% volume in one revolution, and that takes about one second. I can also make very slow incremental changes. You're probably wondering why the heck would I even build this? Well, here is the IR remote control. It takes about 25 seconds to go from zero to full volume. So if I'm trying to lower the volume for a commercial or turn it up for a good part of a song, it just is too slow. Volume control should just always be done with the knob. As you can hear, the dial has 100 detents and my DAC also has 100 increments of volume. This thing is just so fun and satisfying to play with. All right, let me take you through all the steps that I went through to build this. All right, so here I'm taking all the screws out of the DAC and getting the main board out. They made this really easy. The rotary encoder for the volume knob is a separate board that screws on to the main board. So I'm just gonna take that off, unplug it, and we'll solder on some extension leads. These leads are just gonna piggyback onto the existing pins on the rotary encoder. I found that it helps to solder the wire first. That way when you trim the wire, the solder helps keep all the strands constrained and they don't splay out everywhere. Keeping the solder connections neat and short helps prevent the risk of things moving in the future and possibly shorting out. It's also helpful to use masking tape to hold the wire down as you solder. If the wire moves before the solder is fully hardened, it can form cracks and cold solder joints that might fail in the future. So anything you can do to minimize movement helps. A good solder joint should be shiny and reflective. If it's dull, it's probably because the solder got overheated. Yeah, you just took too long to solder and it kind of cooked it. If your solder joint looks dull, you can always just remove that solder and put new fresh solder on. Here I'm marking the clearance area uh, where I can drill a hole to get my three wires out. I'm gonna take this plate into the garage uh, to do the drilling and I just have to remove the antenna lead. I deburred the hole that I drilled and I'm adding this anti-chafe braided sheath to the wires. I don't have much room for a cord grip so I'm just using a couple zip ties here to prevent the cable from pulling out. Reattaching the antenna lead and buttoning everything back up together. Again, I'm wetting the wire ends with solder and I'm soldering on some JST pins for a connector. I'm giving my solder joint a pull test and covering everything with shrink tube. And that about wraps it up for this harness. Let's plug in an external encoder and see if it works. And that seems to check out. The built-in volume knob is also still working. You're probably wondering how I knew that those were the three connection points I needed to make. Earlier in the week, I had taken apart a different DAC, and here's kind of the deep dive into those learnings. These rotary encoders usually have three pins, a common and a channel A and channel B. This one has five pins. The extra two are just for a push button that activates when you push the knob. Looking at the three pins, I'm putting my meter on the center pin and the right pin, and I normally get 3.3 volts. And as I turn the knob in between the detents, it grounds to zero. And measuring between the two left pins, I get the same behavior. It grounds temporarily in between the detents. If we look closely at the board, we can see the pull-up resistors for the rotary encoder as well as the push button. These type of rotary encoders just use dry contacts inside. So as long as the encoder is resting on a detent, I should be able to piggyback a second rotary encoder and have it work. So far everything's working great and I haven't fried it. Here's what the two channels look like on the oscilloscope as I turn the encoder. I'll pause it here so we can take a closer look. We basically have two square waves and one is leading the other. I decided to use an Arduino to interface with the volume knob on the DAC. And because the Arduino only has digital outputs and the DAC is expecting dry contacts, I need a way to interface the two. And for that, I'm using these opto isolators. They basically act as a solid state relay. 
I programmed the Arduino to replicate the signals that are expected by the DAC from the rotary encoder. And as you can see, I can now raise and lower the volume using the Arduino. Once I had that working, I added an encoder and programmed the Arduino to read the encoder and send that encoder signal to the DAC. I knew an encoder would be tough for an Arduino to read because it's switching at such a high frequency, so I picked an encoder with a low line count. This one is 100 pulses per rev, and the DAC is also 100 pulses from min to max. This all seems to be working well, so let's get the wireless part working. On the left, I have a Wi-Fi enabled Arduino connected to the DAC, which I'm calling the slave. And on the right, I have another Wi-Fi enabled Arduino, which I'm calling the master, which is reading the encoder signal. The master is broadcasting to the slave the total number of encoder pulses, and that's displayed on the slave's screen as SP master. And similarly, the slave is also keeping a tally of how many pulses it sent to the DAC, and that is displayed as working SP, or working set point. The slave is always sending pulses to the DAC to try and keep synchronized with the master. I'm using the ESP now protocol to send messages from the master to the slave over Wi-Fi. It's really low latency, and it's a direct Arduino to Arduino Wi-Fi connection. There's no router required. All you have to do is tell the master what the MAC address is of the slave. I'm pretty happy with the response of the volume knob. The DAC responds quickly, much faster than turning the knob on the DAC itself. This is the code that's in the master Arduino. This is the one that's reading the encoder and broadcasting that data to the slave. I started using the ESP now example, and this chunk of code is basically from that example. The only things I've changed is I put the MAC address of the slave Arduino here. So we're basically sending a briefcase of data to that address. Inside that briefcase is an integer called A and a Boolean called B. I'm defining the hardware pins. This is where my programming starts. Uh, so we're reading encoder channel A and channel B. And if channel A was previously a zero, but now it's a one, we know that the encoder has moved. Uh, we're gonna turn on the blue LED just as a visual indication. The direction the encoder changed is by looking at the other channel, channel B. If channel B is a zero, we're going to increment our volume. If it's not, we're going to decrement our volume. We're gonna put that in our briefcase of data that's being sent as well as we're sending this bit of data in our briefcase. This section of code is used to limit how often we send messages. We don't need to send a message every scan. We're only gonna send a message every 50,000 scans, which is about 100 milliseconds. This helps us prioritize the processor for doing more intensive tasks like reading the encoder, which is time critical. This variable f scan interval is set to five, and that just means the first five messages the bit in our briefcase will be a zero, and that's an indication to the slave that the master has been rebooted. As I rotate the encoder, you can see that we're changing the value on the screen, and our blue LED indicator is also working. And if I reset the Arduino, you can see that we're sending a zero for the first few messages. If we don't have this reset bit being sent, this is what will happen. The master is currently sending a set point of 25, and if we reset, the slave thinks zero is the new set point and it changes the volume when it shouldn't be. When the master can send a reset signal to the slave, they can both stay synchronized when the master is reset and the volume won't change unexpectedly. This is the code in the slave Arduino. This is the data type for the briefcase of data that we're receiving from the master, an integer A and Boolean B. This is an example uh, to display the MAC address for your Arduino. It prints to the serial port. When the slave Arduino first turns on, we're gonna turn on this green light for indication. And whatever value the master is sending as a set point, we're gonna initialize our working set point to match. This is where we're pulsing the digital outputs to generate a increasing or decreasing encoder signal. After the pulse is sent, both outputs are left off so as not to interfere with the rotary knob on the DAC. And we're only writing to the LCD occasionally when we're not actively trying to change volume. I move the Arduino from the breadboard to a more permanent soldered PCB. The PCB has a connector for the encoder, which is a JST connector. And here I'm just crimping the encoder cable with the matching JST connector. 
I'm using Infusion 360 to design a housing for the encoder that I can set on a table. And I also designed a knob that can press on. I exported those models to Bamboo Studio, which is the 3D printing software that I use with my A1 Mini 3D printer. The slicing software adds these green trees to support any part of the model that might sag when it prints. These trees simply snap off after the print is made. I designed this part with an o-ring groove and my plan was to add some silicone grease to add some dampening and resistance to the volume knob turning. But it just didn't have a very good feel to it so I've removed the o-ring. Volume knob really needs some resistance. I didn't like how the encoder worked out so I bought a CNC rotary knob. It's also 100 pulse per rev and it has little click detents and I like this much better so I made a small housing for it. I think this looks way nicer. It has a very satisfying click like a little fidget spinner and the aluminum knob just has a nice precise feel and weight to it. All right time to plug everything in and give it a test. Powering up the slave or the receiver, we get our green light indicating that we're initialized. And we should see a blue or red light when we're receiving signals from the master. All right, so this is the completed dial. This will stay on the couch. I have a port there if I need to program it. And if I play some music. All right, well, you made it this far. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions, leave them in the comment section below. And down there, I'll also add a link to the files for my solid models and the Arduino code. And uh, yeah, thanks again for watching.